Hello, Halo Pack members. Welcome to the August update with Michael Ehrman. So Michael, you know, we continue to talk about the GPS functionality and in the upcoming update in the next few weeks, there's going to be some features added to machine learning with the, you know, Halo Collar 2 Plus and, and future Halo Collars. Can you tell us a little more about that? Absolutely. Uh, before I start, again, I want to thank you, Justin, for being a, a great Halo customer and to all of you out there for being loyal pack members. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, so, yes, we've been working for many months now with uh, GPS improvements. We've talked about some we've made recently, but I'm really excited about this new functionality that we've included in the Halo 2 Plus and our newer collars that will provide never before seen accuracy in a product uh, like this. And the way we're doing that is by incorporating artificial intelligence, machine learning right into the collar. And what it does is it can distinguish good signals, good GPS signals from uh, error signals more accurately than any other system has that has ever been created. And by doing so, it's able to throw away the kind of signals that are coming in that are bouncing off of obstacles and would otherwise introduce errors in the positioning. And by only using the good signals that are coming straight to the collar, it results in extremely accurate positioning by the collar all the time. So what you end up with is the most accurate GPS system in any pet technology product. So we're really excited about that and giving that to our customers. And that should be coming out very, very soon. That's great. I, you know, we, you've talked about this. We've talked about this in our, in the other recordings as well is, you know, it really comes down to, you know, the safety of our pets and having that accuracy is, is key to that. So thank you for sharing that. You know what? One other thing that my understanding is, is you're working on, you know, the GPS signal level in the, in the settings and the customer being able, the end user being able to make those adjustments. Um, is, is that something that's coming up that you could talk about a little bit? Sure, Justin. Yeah. So if you're familiar with uh, the way the Halo reports the GPS signal level, uh, there are signal level bars as we show them, uh, low, medium, and high. And the idea behind that is that when the halo is when your dog is near a halo fence boundary it's very important that the signal level is high uh, because that's what allows the halo to make an, an accurate calculation of position and make sure that your dog stays within that fence boundary and as you said that's what it's all about is keeping your dog safe keeping your dog safely within the boundary now, as you know, you can have other can you can have things like your home and other things in the middle of a halo fence that could interfere or block GPS signals. And when that happens, the signal level goes down. It goes down to medium, it goes down to low. And in those instances, the location calculation by the by the GPS receiver may not be as accurate. And What's very important with, with Halo is to detect, is the signal high, medium, or low? When the signal's low, it's assumed to be not accurate, and we don't use it. And you'll notice in the Halo app that the pin, the pet pin, the pet position, will not move around while the signal is low, because we can't accurately track your pet. So it's also important that the signal isn't low anywhere near your Halo uh, fence perimeter, but it could be low in the middle of your home, for example. Now, Halo will ship to you, each Halo ships to you with uh, settings that are good for most customers and are, are work very well for most of our customers. But depending on, for example, the structure of your home or other things that you might encounter within your Halo fences, or maybe even the way your dog is wearing its Halo, or the kind of fur it may have, you might want to adjust those levels up or down. So there's a feature of the Halo app that gives you a control to adjust those settings up and down. And we've been working on ways to make that. And we are rolling out a way that those levels are much more consistent. The more you go to the same place, the more you'll see more consistent readings in those places. Um, despite the fact that satellites are moving around all the time, we're able to make it much more consistent more, more often. 
So it helps you set the right settings if you do need to customize those settings. And we're also actively working on, and we hope to be able to provide very soon, a way that the collar will just automatically detect just the right settings for you. So once you put the collar on your dog, and depending on how your dog is wearing it and the environments your dog goes into, we're, we're working on some very amazing ways to set those levels automatically and kind of dynamically as your dog uh, uses the halo. So um, I'm very excited with about the possibility of us being able to give that to our customers. Of course, when and if we can, we can do that, it'll be something we deploy uh, over the air. And, you know, another possible uh, innovation to bring to all of our Halo Pack members. That's awesome. And that's exciting because, you know, if it's one less thing that the customer has to, you know, remember to do or think about doing, and then this will automatically do that, it's going to be really beneficial. So thank yep. you for that. Sure. So Michael, I, I have a Halo 1 and a Halo 2, and I've had great success. I've had, you know, I have, I have very little you know, GPS issues. I mean, great signal almost all the time. Um, what's, uh, you know, I very rarely go into the app. My dog knows its boundaries. It doesn't do much. Um, you know, is there anything coming in the near future that's really going to help me understand, like maybe if I put my collar on it, then it's not working? Right, okay, so you bring up a good point. I think a lot of our customers, once they get into the normal flow of using their Halo every day, they're not always sitting in the Halo app looking at things. It's great that you have the Halo app. If you ever want to just take a look at where is your dog right now or what's it been doing all day, you've had it. But to keep your dog safe, you really don't need to be looking at the Halo app all the time. Um, but as you said, we do have scenarios where we want to get your attention. And we know, for example, that there's something going on with your Halo um, and you shouldn't put it on your dog. And if the system detects that now, it will, uh, in the newest version of the Halo uh, firmware, no matter what version you have, it will notify you, hey, go take a look at the Halo app. And the way the collar will notify you is it will start to vibrate when you unplug it from the charger. And the LED, the main LED, will toggle uh, red and white. And the purpose is to get your attention. You shouldn't it should be apparent to you that you really don't want to put a collar that's vibrating like that on your dog. So we want to keep you from putting it on your dog. If you were to see that happen, go open your Halo app and it'll direct you to what you need to know to address the situation. Usually that means getting in touch with the Halo, uh, our Halo support team using the Halo dog park, talking to them and they'll explain what's going on. But it's very important to us to keep your dog safe. So if we sense that there might be a safety uh, concern or possibility that something's not working inside the halo, we will let you know. Uh, and the halo will let you know even without the app. So I just, that's a new function that's being rolled out. And I want everyone to know to, you know, that's what that means if they ever come across that. Uh, that's a great feature. Cause like I said, I very rarely go into the app. So, uh, and I, and I trust the collar and I trust when I put it on my dog, that it's going to do what it's supposed to. So having that as something that's going to, you know, alert me because if it was vibrating when I picked it up, I'm probably going to wonder what's going on and not, you know, put it on the dog. I'm going to try and figure that out. So right. thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Michael. It's, you know, great to catch up with you again and get these updated. You know, I love hearing these updates and seeing the updates come through on my, my own collar. I can tell you last time we talked about the, the live pin moving around and how I told you every night I let my dog out and I'm, I'm doing the return whistle and then wait in six seconds to see if he's coming. You know, now I'm seeing it right away. He's, he's moving right towards the door. I feel good about it. I can walk away and then go open up the door and let him in. So that's great. But I look forward to uh, chatting again with you next month and continuing to see how the Halo company is innovating and, you know, making our dogs safer and safer. So thank you, Michael. I appreciate your time. Well, yeah, thank you as well, Justin. And again, thank you to all the Halo Pack members for paying attention, for being great, uh, part of our great community and for all of us trying to keep your dog safe uh, every day. Thank you again. Thank you.